Huizu's grandma takes him to the marketplace, where she buys groceries for dinner, which makes Huizu wonder why she is trying to force him to eat what only cows eat normally. He gets upset because he wanted to eat some meat, but he knows that's not an option as money doesn't grow on trees. The caring grandma notices how down her little grandson feels, so she decides to give him a good treat for once and buys him a steak as well, emptying her wallet completely. Huizu becomes touched by his grandmother's actions and wonders if he too can fulfill her wishes one day by buying her jewelry or something. They return home, and after having a nice belly full dinner, he surprises his grandmother with a hair clip that he bought secretly for her, which upsets her as she doesn't understand why the boy wasted his precious money on something that has no value. However, once she takes a proper look at herself in the mirror, she takes a liking to it, which makes Huizu finally happy. At present, Andong, who reveals himself to be almost half beaten to death, apologizes to Daejin for not living up to his expectations. Daejin tells Undong not to worry about it and asks him instead who put him in such a state. Undong reveals it was the Lav H group that not only beat Undong but also kidnapped Huizu's grandmother, which enrages Huizu so much that he remains completely stunned. Daejin calms Huizu down before he starts blaming Undong and promises him that he will help him get to his grandmother. Before they take their leave, Daejin notices that someone is spying on them from outside, so he gets cautious of their surroundings. Meanwhile, at Lav H's main hideout building, the executives have gathered, where one of the executives, Jong Hun, tests out his new drug on a poor bird and gets amused after seeing its harmful effect. But he doesn't get satiated enough and decides to use the same drug on humans as well to see if they will feel similar pain as the bird. Another executive named Junsu loves the idea and can't seem to wait for the results either. Nanju, the self-proclaimed lady murderer, doesn't like the fact that these two are putting their guards down, even though they should stay sharp as their team member has been taken down. But Suyuk, the Arsenal fan, doesn't think Nanju is staying sharp himself, as he looks too busy having fun with women. They realize that none of them are serious, so Nanju moves on from that topic and asks Suyuk why their boss kidnapped the boy Huizu's grandmother and in reply, Suyuk explains that Huizu apparently stole an item from their boss, but what exactly it is is still not disclosed to them. Jonghan recollects the time he last saw Huizu and gets eager to torture him, knowing that he will come to save his grandma. Not soon after, Huizu makes his entry into the hideout and gets warmly welcomed by the Lab H members, who start to mock both him and his grandma right away to provoke him. It works perfectly as Huizu starts to beat every single one of them up himself and clears the entire floor without even taking a scratch. He then takes the lift to go to the rooftop, assuming that the executives are probably there, but the lift gets stopped abruptly at the 14th floor by Jonghan, who grabs Huizu and belittles him for falling right into his trap. Jonghan tells him that he will now experience how it feels to suffer at the hands of the men who used to follow him once revealing that Huizu was one of the big bosses of Lab H. Huizu seems to not care about his past and demands that Jonghan tell him where his grandma is. But Jonghan keeps provoking him instead and even throws his grandma's hair clip at him, revealing that they have already tortured her and have even sprayed her with their deadly drugs. Jonghan also mentions how Huizu's grandma held on to that cheap hairpin and got beaten up even more because of it. Hearing this, Huizu can only imagine what his dear grandmother is going through and to make Jonghan pay for his crimes, he steps forward with the intention to finish him off slowly and painfully. A flashback to when Huizu was still the boss of Lab H shows Jonghan at the same hideout torturing a dog using his drugs. As he pours the drug onto it, the dog begins to tremble in fear, and as it struggles to survive, Jonghan smirks maniacally. Jonghan's subordinate mentions that the Guwal brothers are fighting over their territory and according to the rumors, they might barge in here soon, so he thinks they should report it to their boss. However, Jonghan deemed it unnecessary and decided to deal with the Guwal gang alone. He is unfortunately taken by surprise as Guwal gang barges in there with a surprise attack and starts dashing towards him. Being an executive, Jonghan of course doesn't struggle at all against them until they start using weapons against him and overpower him with their numbers. As his consciousness begins to fade away, Huizu comes to the rescue as the big boss and barehandedly takes all of the Guwal gang members down all alone. This being the first time Jonghan, seeing such strength coming from his boss, realizes the levels and starts to fear him truly. But that was all in the past as currently, Jonghan doesn't fear Huizu at all and comes to attack him, telling him that he is no longer as weak as he was in the past. He punches Huizu who blocks it barely and gets pushed back by his sheer power. Getting beaten by his old subordinate, 
Weezu doesn't mind and asks Jonghan again where his precious grandma is. Jonghan doesn't answer him, of course, and tells him instead about the look on animals' faces when they are on the brink of death, implying that Huizu's grandma is in a critical state. While distracting Huizu by provoking him, Jonghan brings out his drug spray out of his pocket, but before he can spray it, Huizu notices it and smashes the drug spray into pieces, causing the liquid to fall on Jonghan's face instead. Before Jonghan can express his pain caused by the drug, Huizu starts kicking him in the face and shows him his place. While getting beaten up brutally, Jonghan remembers what kind of animal Huizu was when he was their boss, and that realization reignites his fear once again, causing him to tremble heavily. Huizu knocks him out completely and steps away to deal with the other executives so that he can get things over with as quickly as possible. He goes to the 15th floor, where he gets greeted by Suyuk, the Arsenal fan, hinting that he is about to take the L as well, just like Arsenal does constantly. Before Suyuk makes any small talk, Weizu attacks him as he doesn't have much time left. But this time it's not just Suyuk, but also Nangyu and the current boss, Saiyang, whom he needs to defeat, which only pushes his adrenaline even more as he can now take care of everything at once. While the tension between the four is fuming on the 15th floor, on the first floor, the drunk executive Junsu tries going outside to get some snacks but gets stopped by Daejin, who realizes that Junsu was the one who beat up Andong earlier. Junsu confesses that he indeed was the person who used his liquor bottle to smash Undong's head and asks Daejin if he is getting mad hearing all this. Daejin doesn't reply to this question and instead smashes his face with a fierce punch, knocking him away, and then steps forward to do the same thing that he did to Undong. A flashback shows Daejin training his body and flexing his six-pack abs when Undong comes there, bringing him a protein shake. Daejin tells Undong that he doesn't have to do this anymore, but Undong explains that he is only doing such things as a bribe, telling Daejin that he has a favor to ask him. He smiles and asks Daejin to train him, saying that he wants to get stronger as he is tired of being frail as a shrimp. He also expresses his wish to be of help to everyone in the runaway family, so Daejin agrees to train him and starts off by making him bench press, saying that it will be the best way to train his core muscles. This scene is a great reminder of Daejin training under Hangul Jo and the days when things weren't that hard. Back to the present, Nundong is now at the hospital, fighting for his survival with the possibility that he won't wake up soon. At the Lab H hideout, Daejin tells Junsu to get up, as their fight has just started. Junsu slowly gets on his knees, wipes the blood off his face, and exclaims that this has been the kind of snack that he has been craving for days, implying that he also wants to fight Daejin. Daejin doesn't wait for any chit-chat and goes for another punch right on the cheeks of Junsu. He follows up with a kick, which Junsu blocks by using one of his subordinates as his shield. He then throws down the unconscious subordinate and reaches for his alcohol bottle, chugging the entirety of it. Daejin tries to attack him again, but using the tactics of a street fight, Junsu throws him off by spitting the alcohol on his face. With this sneaky move, Daejin gets blinded and Junsu grabs the opportunity, attacking him right away. Daejin backs off immediately to wipe off his face, but Junsu easily closes the distance and starts playing a whack on his face, putting the alcohol bottle to full use. Junsu takes a moment to tell Daejin how much he hates useless worms like Undong, who can't even defend themselves and leech off others. He demonstrates how parasites like Undong work by pouring alcohol into their mouths. Daejin doesn't understand why he is messing around with his own lackey, and to explain, Junsu tells him that he thinks that lackey is useless and is only good for being a plaything. However, Daejin doesn't consider Undong to be useless and only thinks of him as a family member. So to prove Junsu wrong, he knocks his signature weapon out of his hand and grabs him by his hair, telling him that the only parasite here is him and not anyone else. To disinfect this parasite, Daejin smashes his head against the alcohol bottle and repeatedly keeps smashing him to make him suffer for messing with his runaway family. After the sturdy bottle gets crushed into bits, Daejin finally stops and walks away, knowing that the loser will die if he continues anymore. He wonders where Huizu currently is and regrets not asking Junsu about Huizu's location before knocking him out. Meanwhile, Huizu keeps staring at the scumbags from his old organization, and in rage he asks the current boss, Saiyang, once again where his grandma is held. Saiyang, of course, doesn't reveal her location just yet and assures Huizu that she is alive, at least for now. This indicates that she is soon about to die, or is on the verge of death which makes him realize that he will have to deal with them as fast as possible. 
Suhyuk starts warming up before going into the fight and assures his boss that he and the other executives will alone be able to take down Huizu. Nanju Azio takes his position and charges at Huizu together with Suyuk. Huizu barely dodges the first blow coming at him, but he doesn't manage to block Suyuk's kick and gets pushed away. He gets super annoyed fighting against two of them at once, so he comes up with a plan and starts running in all directions while shattering down all of the lights. After successfully breaking all of the lights without the executives realizing it, it gets dark and easy for Huizu to attack everyone at once. But he doesn't target the two executives and instead goes straight for the big boss Saiyang to end it all at once, losing the vibe that he is the predator and the Lab H gang is his prey. In the meantime, Daejin takes the lift patiently after learning from one of the grunts that Huizu has gone to see the boss of Lab H on the top floor. But for some reason, like Huizu's, Daejin's lift stops at the 15th floor. But at the same time, the door doesn't open, which makes Daejin realize that something has definitely gone wrong on the other side. So he taps on the button on one floor below and goes to the 14th floor, wondering what is going on. He tries to take the emergency stairs to the 15th floor, but unsurprisingly finds the door to be blocked off as well, meaning that Lab H had always intended to trap Huizu on the 15th floor. Speaking of Huizu, he sneaks up behind Saiyang, and as Saiyang realizes it, he disappears into the darkness once again. Saiyang can't believe that the former boss of such a notorious gang would resort to playing such childish tricks as hide and seek and belittle him for acting like an idiot. Weizu shows who is the real idiot as he punches Suyuk right in the face, followed by Nanju, without them realizing it. He keeps throwing hits at them while hiding in the shadows so the two executives bring out their phone and turn on its torch to find where he is hiding. But the two phones don't seem to be enough, as Weizu is quite agile and keeps jumping into the dark. He swiftly takes down the arsenal fan and then ambushes the ladies' man, proficiently knocking both of them out cold. As the emergency lights turn on, Huizu turns to Saiyang, telling him that he is the only rat left now. Saiyang doesn't get agitated at all and commends Huizu for watching so many Batman movies that he has manifested himself into becoming Batman himself. Saiyang then insults Huizu with a smile, calling him a traitor for betraying his old organization, which angers him as he doesn't think that he has betrayed anyone. So he tells Saiyang to stop dragging things out and tells him to come at him so that he can end it once and for all. Saiyang exclaims how much he hates the fact that Huizu is showing hatred toward him, as they were once very close to each other. Apparently, in the past, all Huizu did was fight non-stop, being the notorious gang leader and had been chasing things to stimulate his peripheral nerves. In no time, he was surrounded by people who voluntarily became his subordinates. Even though he didn't want to be part of any team, and he got many followers in his team who also liked to fight. At that time, all sorts of people came to join his team, and among them, a sleek kid one day came to their hideout, requesting that he take him in, saying that he wanted to become strong fighters like them. That nerdy kid was none other than Saiyang, whose smile kind of irritated Huizu, so he rejected his joint request and slammed the door on him, telling him to go away. But Saiyang still wished to become as cool as the infamous street fighters from back then, and so he took a hit job from some gangsters to prove his worth. According to the hit job, he was tasked with getting the eyeballs of a boss of another criminal group who worked at a factory near the local bridge. Even though it was a crazy task for a mere school student, Saiyang still took that job, and in a few days he brought back the eyeballs of that man and gave them directly to Huizu. Although Huizu was left impressed by the talent of this young kid, he immediately realized that he would soon grow up to become a monster. And that is why he now regrets recruiting him back then, as he could have prevented all of these unfortunate events if only Saiyang had been Lab Ace's leader. In any case, he only cares about his grandma, so he asks Saiyang again to give him her location. In reply, Saiyang tells him that he won't even need to know his grandma's location, as he is confident that he will die before he can even reach her. The battle between the former top dog and the current top dog begins, and with both showing off their street fighting talents, Weezu shows that he hasn't lost his moves even after being away from the organization all this time. However, it soon becomes clear that the tides have changed as Saiyang shows that he isn't taking any damage at all even after getting hit by Huizu's full power, which makes it clear that the current boss is going easy on the former boss. To prove that Huizu is way past his prime, Saiyang takes the initiative and smacks him in the face, telling him that he is no longer the kid who followed him around all day. While Huizu remains in silence and tanks the hits, Saiyan wonders how someone can remain so unchanged even after such a long period of time, 
mentioning that Huizu has the same gaze as before, that very same demeaning look that he once hated the most. So he decides to rip those angry eyes out of Huizu. While their fight is still going nowhere, a flashback shows two girls walking on the sidewalk after school, talking about them going to a music show. While the schoolgirls were talking about bands and K-pop idols, the boys on the other hand were talking about soccer games, showing their interest in Messi and Ronaldo. However, amongst them, one guy didn't have similar interests, and that guy considered people with worldly interests to be pathetic. That guy is, of course, none other than the teenage schoolboy version of the current Cyan, and he exclaimed how much he thinks that the people around him are like stupid fish with no brains. The only things that piqued his interest were people fighting against each other, and one day, when he ran into his soon-to-be idol, Huizu, who was busy beating dozens of gangsters, it became clear to him as to who he was going to worship. He began to idolize Huizu and even joined his organization, as said before, so that he could follow him around. But Huizu wasn't the type of guy he thought he would be. Rather, he was kind-hearted as he took Saiyang into his home after learning that his father was an abuser. Because they lived under the same roof, the two brothers in arms soon became even closer. So to get his idol's love and acknowledgement, Saiyang began beating around people himself and contributed so much to the organization that he soon became number two. The second top dog of Lab H, Huizu started to put his full trust in Saiyang. But the boy wasn't satisfied with that and wanted more acknowledgement from his idol. So one day, when Huizu's gang was busy chasing another gang's boss, Saiyang pursued that guy alone and kidnapped the guy's sister instead when he was not able to find him. He proudly showed Huizu the beaten up girl he had captured, but of course, Huizu wasn't a monster, so instead of being proud of his subordinate, he was disgusted by him. When Saiyang saw the look of contempt coming from Huizu, he started to hate those eyes, and now that Huizu has the same look, Saiyang can't help but hate it once again. He calls Huizu a hypocrite for thinking he is some sort of saint for not hurting a woman when he has done hundreds of unintelligible crimes himself. Huizu doesn't care, as he can only think of his caring grandma, who took him in after finding him in an injured state and took care of him with all her heart. So he makes it clear that there should always be a line that shouldn't be crossed, and because Saiyang has kidnapped his grandma to prove a point that people will come if their family members get taken hostage, he has crossed a very big line. To make him understand better, Huizu tells Saiyang that he will be teaching him a real-life lesson to make him learn some manners and slowly steps toward him with the intent to murder him quite literally. Saiyang realizes that as well, so he reveals that if Huizu keeps intending on hurting him, Huizu's precious grandma is going to die. Huizu, of course, doesn't understand what this smiling scumbag means, but knowing that he isn't lying, he gets on his knees, begging him not to hurt the only person who truly cares for him. Now that Saiyang has full control over his former idol, he starts humiliating him and telling him to bark like a dog if he wants his precious grandmother to live. Unfortunately for the bad guy, the torture session is soon about to end as someone stronger is about to barge in. And this someone doesn't have a grandmother who he can threaten. Yes, we are talking about the almighty Daejin. Meanwhile, at the general hospital, Yundong regains consciousness and finds Mr. Definitely not a member of the Illuminati guy beside him. He barely grabs Mr. Illuminati's hand before he can go grab a nurse and mumbles to him something that shocks him greatly. On the other side, Saiyang's torture session continues as Daejin has still not broken through the door, so he puts his shoe on top of Huizu's face and tells him to lick it if he wishes his grandmother to live. As Huizu starts to consider doing so, Saiyang becomes disgusted with his former idol and calls him a sore loser for turning into someone like this. With the last bit of respect gone from him, Saiyang remembers again when Huizu scolded him for kidnapping a girl. He went to get his thoughts cleared as he couldn't understand why Huizu gave him that disgusted look, even though he was only trying to make him proud. Shortly after this event, Saiyang grew distant from Huizu and slowly brought Huizu's followers under his shadow. Once Huizu realized that his followers were only acting loyal towards Saiyang, he called Saiyang to his office and asked him if he wanted to grab a meal, telling him it was his birthday that day. Saiyang of course knew beforehand that today was Huizu's birthday, and so as a gift, he gave him a very expensive Rolex watch, which made him wonder where Saiyang is getting this money from. Saiyang explained that he had started a new business, revealing that he had started meddling with drugs, going against the rules of Huizu's Lab H gang. This made Huizu mad, but before he could say anything, Saiyang grabbed his hand and asked him to focus on something else, as it was his birthday, telling him that they should go to an expensive restaurant. 
Husu became even more mad at the obviously inert boy and told him clearly again to stop doing his drug business. He threw the Rolex watch in anger, which hurt Saiyang's feelings, so he for the first time went against his idol and stabbed him in the stomach with a knife. But he didn't stop there and convinced the members of Lab H that Huizu embezzled money from their organization, manipulating everyone to think that he was a traitor. Huizu couldn't believe what was happening to him on his birthday, and moreover he couldn't believe that the kid with whom he shared the same roof betrayed him like that. Currently, Cyan keeps beating the living crap out of Huizu, who has completely lost the will to fight, as he is now certain that if he tries to move Cyan's head, his grandma will perish. Even after beating up Huizu for a while, Cyan doesn't get satisfied and starts to think that if he cuts Huizu's grandma's face open, then his sense of frustration will be relieved. Hearing this, Huizu begs him not to hurt her anymore, which infuriates Cyan so much that he starts squeezing his fingers into Huizu's eyes to gauge them up. But before he can hurt him badly, Daejin breaks open the locked emergency door and makes his grand entrance. Cyan doesn't like the fact that he now has an uninvited guest and becomes upset to see that Daejin is still the same old loose cannon as before. Knowing that Daejin is about to attack him, Cyan informs him that if he tries to even hurt him, Huizu's grandma is going to die. However, Daejin appears to have already rescued Huizu's grandma, telling Huizu not to worry anymore. To explain what happened, the scene shifts and we see the Illuminati guy Dogyum and his subordinates raiding the lab ace another facility where Huizu's grandma was actually taken hostage. Dogyum reveals that when Undong regained consciousness, he revealed where Huizu's grandma was, explaining that he overheard some henchmen talking about it luckily. And thanks to this crucial information, Dogyum and his team have successfully recovered the old lady. Learning that she is safe, Huizu gets relieved, but Cyan doesn't. He exclaims his disappointment in Daejin, telling him that he will regret not forming an alliance with him and the Four Kings. But Daejin seems to not care as he reveals his intentions to dethrone the Four Kings while pulling his no homo hair back. Cyan doesn't understand what Daejin means, and to clarify his statement, he asks Daejin if he intends to take over Lab H. He makes it loud and clear to Daejin that if he even tries to mess with him, he will grind him up quite literally and feed his bits to the dogs. But Daejin believes that things will be quite the opposite, and so he tells Saiyang that he will be the one who gets rid of. He claims that he will devour Saiyang, but Saiyang doesn't think that he will even be able to chew him with his current strength. Daejin starts swinging his fists at Saiyang like a madman, but none of them land, and as Saiyang counters with an uppercut, it becomes clear that Daejin will never be able to become a professional boxer. Speaking of boxers, Saiyang shows Daejin what real boxing is by throwing rapid punches at him from everywhere. Saiyang tries belittling Daejin to get an advantage, asking him who taught him how to box so poorly. We all know it was Hangul, but instead of saying that, Daejin punches back but fails to land it. But his attack itself doesn't fail, as he stops Saiyang from backing off by stomping him on his foot and smacking him in the face while also getting smacked at the same time. Daejin doesn't stop there and once again grabs Saiyang's head and punches him, which this time makes him fall flat on the floor because of the incredible impact. This time Saiyang gets scared of Daejin as he realizes that Daejin can actually fight, so he runs through the back door to try and escape. Daejin gets upset as he doesn't want to play hide and seek, but because he has no options but to do so, he tries looking for him and enters a random laboratory room. Saiyang, while lurking in the shadows, explains that this room is where they produce drugs on a large scale and again proposes that they should join hands so that they can monopolize the entirety of Seoul and have infinite financial power. He also promises Daejin that if he does so, he will help him surpass his goal of getting hate wine. However, Daejin falls for Saiyang's crap at all and tells him to come out of his rat hole. Saiyang does so accordingly while smirking and telling Daejin that the place they are in is also known for mixing chemicals in a complex manner, and speaking of chemicals, they can explode. So subtly, Saiyang cuts off a gas container before Daejin can even make a move and lights it up, turning it into a bomb and causing it to explode right away. As everything turns into smithereens, Huizu, from outside the room on fire, wonders if this is going to be the end of their runaway family. He remembers when Daejin first offered him and his grandmother to stay at their house when he was in trouble. And now that Daejin is clearly the one in trouble, Wizu pushes himself to rescue him and crawls towards the burning room, where Saiyang is laughing maniacally. However, Daejin reveals himself to be unscathed from the explosion thanks to his plot armor and slowly but menacingly approaches Saiyang, asking him if he has seen a ghost and noticing how scared he looks. 
The look in Daejin's eyes only scares Siang because of a certain man he met after he kicked Huizu out of Lab H back then. After kicking him out, he aggressively expanded the organization through his already successful and blooming drug business. He wished to create such a giant organization that even a righteous man like Huizu would not help but acknowledge him. With that goal, he started working, and one day, he learned from his subordinate that they had gotten a proposal for an alliance from the three largest organizations in Gamebook, who were aiming to keep Hate Wang in check. However, Siang wanted to rule Sewell alone, so he rejected the alliance offer and ended up meeting someone who, just like Daejin, wanted to devour him and showed great ambitions. It's the same look that Daejin currently has, and that makes him feel like he is nothing compared to him. Daejin, with his red devilish eyes, punches Siang and tells him that he won't be dying anytime soon. Seeing Siang's defeat, Weezu reveals that he knew that the guy had always admired him. But when he found out that his admiration had started to take a wrong turn and his greed had gone out of control, he couldn't help but despise him for it. So now that Daejin has finally finished the matters that he himself couldn't, he feels happy and thanks him for doing what he himself should have done years ago. Daejin, who clearly has taken a great hit from the impact of the explosion, starts feeling dizzy and tells Huizu that they should go to the hospital soon. Otherwise, things won't be good for them as well. Later at the hospital, Huizu safely reunites with his grandma, while Daejin recovers along with Undong without any issues. On the other hand, the explosion at the Lab H hideout grabs the police force's attention, so they investigate the place, and after finding out that the entire place is filled with drug-related crimes, they put a big ban on its entry and arrest Siang and all of the other executioners for their crimes. The organization crumbles quickly with the higher-ups gone for good, and its former leader, who is still full of regrets, finally decides to become a decent person so that he doesn't meet the same fate as them. He kneels down to his grandma, telling her that he has to redeem himself, and he takes his leave of her, promising her that once he is done with his last mission, he will return to her as a better person. Grandma hugs Huizu and promises him as well that she will be waiting for as long as he needs her too. This gesture brings tears to Huizu's eyes, so he jokingly tells her that this time when he comes back, he will bring her some nice beef steak as well. Back at Daejin's base, Do Yum asks him what he plans on doing now that Lab H is gone and how they are going to spread their influence. Daejin assures him that they will be fine, revealing that they now have a new member in their team who is none other than Huizu. Later, at Huizu's welcoming party, P. Dojium asks Huizu what exactly Siang was chasing him for. Huizu thinks for a moment, but rather than answering, he tells Dojium to wait patiently, as they are going to find it out soon enough. To change the topic, Huizu asks Dejin what their next move would be, as they have now taken down one of the four kings of Gangbuk. Dojium thinks that they should prepare for their next plan as well, because there is a chance that Yushan will get away if they wait too long. However, Daejin doesn't think that that is going to happen and claims that the others will attack soon as the balance has already been broken. Just a few days after Daejin's statement, Hate Wang's crew, led by an executive named Do Chang, arrived at the Four Kings Mile Group's hideout. They destroy everything everywhere with the goal of finding one of the Four Kings, and it is revealed that while this group is ravaging at One King's hideout, other groups of Hate Wang are ravaging at other hideouts. This clear sign of war reaches one of the Four Kings, Maiol, who is at a butcher shop, and he wonders if he will be able to stop Hate Wang's invasion in Game Buck alone. The other kings who are with him agree that at this rate, Hate Wang will be able to take over all of Game Buck, and one of them, Won Bin, who is wiser than the others, realizes that because Siang was taken down by a weakling like Daejin, Hate Wang became confident in their abilities to beat the Four Kings. Apparently, they have been called by the Hate Wang's executives with a notice that if they do not surrender themselves in the next 24 hours, all four of them will disappear from Earth without a trace. Mayol can't believe that this is happening to them after all of their concrete plans, and he suggests that they fight together as there is still a chance that they can defend themselves if united. Sangrok doesn't think they have time anymore, as he senses that Daejin and his gang have already come here, and just as he tells them that, Daejin breaks the door open and comes inside with Dodiem and Huizu. But Daejin claims to not have come here to pick up a fight, rather he proposes that they team up so that they can together beat Hate Wang out of existence. Mayol doesn't recognize Daejin at first glance, as he was stuck under an iron door last time, and when he learns that this kid is the one who took down Lab H, he gets enraged and blames Daejin for disrupting the balance of the underworld in Seoul. He starts to tell Daejin all about Hate Wang's invasion, but Daejin stops him, as he knows everything very well. 
Dajin goes straight to the point and tells the remaining three kings that since they have lost Lab H, one of their most prominent parts, they only have the choice to live like cowards or become prey of other animals. Mayol gets provoked as he doesn't consider himself low enough to be pitied by the likes of Dajin. But the smart guy Wonbin stops him and tells him that they are already running short of manpower and that if they waste their energy fighting more people, they will lose the chance to survive against Hagwine. So he proposes that they should act quickly but calmly and negotiate with the parties so that they can prevent this calamitous situation. However, Mayol doesn't want to negotiate with either party as he doesn't want to hand over the organization that he built over the years after working so hard. But he knows that the two other kings won't be in support of him, so he resigns from the four kings and goes outside to fight Hate Wang alone, telling them to feel free to negotiate with whoever and whatever they like. Daejin later goes around the seaside with Dogyam and Weizu, where he goes deep into his thoughts and wonders if there is even a possibility in any universe that the remaining two active kings will team up with them. He acknowledges how stubborn the kings are and wonders whether he should have resorted to using brute force on them. Weizu thinks that the three of them weren't enough to take all of the three kings at once, but Dogyam doesn't agree with him and tells him that brute force doesn't bring solutions every time. Daejin tells both of them not to worry, promising them that the kings will take his bait right before they starve to death. Meanwhile, at the fourth location of the four kings' hideouts, Hate Wang is still causing a ruckus and has almost taken down every single one of the people present there. Mayol comes there to defend his home, and as soon as he steps up, many Hate Wang members approach him, revealing that he is prepared to fight the kings of Gamebuck. However, preparations themselves are not enough, as Mayol barehandedly starts throwing them around like a maniac. While he is busy venting out his anger on the small fries, Hate Wang executive Da Cheng gets out of his limo and tells Mayol to surrender yet again. He claims that Hate Wang will soon be able to take control of Gangbuk and warns him that if he keeps holding on, things will get very messy for him. Mayol doesn't heed his words and comes to attack him, which shows to be his biggest mistake as Da Cheng easily grabs him, calling him pathetic, and tells him that his organization is falling apart only because he himself isn't qualified to be a king or a leader. After easily knocking the nuisance out, Doc Chain instructs his lackeys to clean up the mess and heads forward to deal with his other businesses immediately. But surprising enough, Mayol stands up again with his sheer will and tells him that their business isn't just done yet. Do Chain applauds Mayol's attitude, and so he finally takes things seriously, takes off his gloves, and finishes the same job swiftly again, calling the unconscious Mayol rather an incompetent fool. With the second king defeated, Hate Wang's goal of controlling Gamebuck becomes even more solid and visible. Soon after, the Hate Wang members try to bury Mayol alive just like they normally do, and in the meantime, Mayol opens his eyes and accepts his fate, as he has no strength left in his body to even move. He regrets the fact that things are going to end like this for him, and he regrets even more that his hard-working organization will go to total waste. Thankfully for him, he isn't going to die just yet as Daejin, the hero, has come here to his rescue, offering him an alliance yet again. This time, Mayol makes the smart choice and agrees to join Daejin's team. Daejin asks him if he has gotten smarter after getting nearly murdered by Haegwang. This tame comment infuriates Mujil so much that he screams in anger and tells Daejin to not think of himself as someone special just because he is helping him and makes it very clear that he is only joining him temporarily and won't be working under him. Mayol is also sure that Daejin is not going to be able to convince the other four king's leaders, but Daejin claims otherwise and takes him back to his base. Meanwhile, at the four king's business storage building, two guys fail to reach the phone number of Mayol, which makes them wonder if Hate Wang has already gotten to him. Knowing that Hate Wang is right at their doorstep, the two grunts consider running away, but because this is the last business place that Hate Wang has yet to take over, they still don't want to give it away. So they hurriedly locked all doors instead of stalling for time, hoping that Mayel would make a clutch entrance and save them. Their blocking method greatly fails as Hegwang's executive, Da Chang, breaks in using a car and tells the grunts to stand down. However, the grunts notice how heavily they have outnumbered him, so they pick up a fight like fools and suffer greatly because of it. And it soon becomes crystal clear that Da Chang is literally a monster who is on a completely different level than even the four kings. Because the grunts didn't surrender to Hegwang, Duckchain gave them the punishment of death and told them to blame their weak leader for their state today. One of the grunts who reveals to be Mile Group executive named Hiu begs Do Chang to spare everyone except him, claiming that he is the one who has messed up and not their leader. 
So Duchesne gives him a knife and tells him to cut off his hand if he wants him to spare him and his underlings. Hugh puts all the courage in his heart but still fails to stab his hand as he is scared of the pain that will follow. Realizing that he loves himself more than anyone, he becomes selfish and tells his underlings that it was their own fault for joining this organization voluntarily. This act of grunting disgusts Do Chang, so he gives all of the underlings a chance to live, telling them to murder Hio, who has just abandoned them in exchange. They happily agree to do so and eliminate the traitor, whom they have been trusting for all these days. Back at Daejin's base, Mayol gets shocked to find out that the two other leaders of the Four Kings are chilling there, meaning that they have decided to join Daejin. Wonbin explains to Mayol that the only reason he joined Daejin was because he didn't want to hand Gamebook over to them, while Sinongruk nods in agreement. Now that the alliance has been achieved, they all take a seat at the group table to discuss what their next step will be. Wonbin first explains who their enemy Don Chang is, and according to him, Don Chang is actually the head of Hate Wine currently, who has been attacking all of the businesses run by the Four Kings simultaneously. There were rumors of Don Chang being a former member of a nationwide mob in the past, but he established himself as an influential figure after joining Hague Wine. Daejin stops Won Bin from explaining any further and tells him that they are on the wrong point, explaining that they have to redirect their thoughts to figure out why they lost against Hague Wine. He explains that the four kings in Hague Wine are similar in power, yet Hague Wine easily took all of them down just because Daejin got rid of Lab H. This brings one major difference between the two criminal organizations, and that is that Hate Wang is united as one while the Four Kings are completely divided. Daejin further explains, telling them that when Hate Wang attacked Gamebuck, they moved as a single team while the Four Kings were separated. The fact that everyone scattered around when Hate Wang attacked was the main reason, according to Daejin, for their defeat. So Daejin thinks that they need a leader to unify the organizations, willing to do it himself, However, Mayol completely disapproves of the idea, as he doesn't want Dejin or anyone else to have full control of everything. Wanbin doesn't think they have any other options but to comply, but he too doesn't agree to do it for free and tells Dejin that he will have to prove that he has what it takes to be a true leader. So to prove that Dejin is worthy, he promises to get rid of Doncheng, who is causing the Four Kings the most trouble, indicating that this is the next step in what's going to be a long and bloody war. Meanwhile, Don Cheng finds out that his underlings have failed to murder Mayol, but before punishing them, he asks them to explain how they failed at their rather easy task. The underlings explain that when they had almost buried Mayol in the nearby hill, out of nowhere they were attacked by the guy who once broke into Hate Wang's ancient port, meaning that it was Daejin. Don Cheng clearly knows that his underlings wouldn't be able to stop Daejin even if they wanted to, yet he punishes them by murdering them for failing to stop Daejin, calling them utterly useless. He returns to his temporary base in Gamebuck and calls up someone in Japan who is none other than Yu Zhang Shin, the big boss of Hate Wang, and tells him that the kid they have been chasing from the Hangul Zhou family, Daejin, is currently in Gamebuck. Not only that, he also mentions that Daejin has joined a coalition with Gamebuck's four kings, which makes Yu Zhang step out of his seat in excitement, as he can't believe that a small fry like Daejin grew up to become so big. He knows that if he leaves Daejin B, he will become even bigger and so he tells Don Chang to take care of both Daejin and the Four Kings as soon as possible so that they can have full control over Seoul. Yu Zhang also mentions that he doesn't intend on leaving Japan as he has made some powerful friends there and is running a smooth business there. He ends the call by wishing Don Chang the best on his part of the business. Just as Don Chang ends the call, he gets another call, this time from Daejin who gives him a chance to catch him, telling him to find him tonight at H Factory near the mountains. He instructs Don Chen to come alone, telling him that their fight is going to be one against one and promising him that he himself will also come alone. Of course, Daejin doesn't intend to come alone, as he knows the rules of the streets and also knows that Don Chang will surely come with some sort of backup as Big Boss Yu Zhang himself is pursuing him. But later that night, it was revealed that Don Chang was actually going alone with only his driver to the said location as he was confident in his own abilities when he suddenly got another phone call from Daejin. In the meantime, it was revealed that the restaurant that Hate Wang has been occupying and torturing the people working there is ambushed by Daejin's team members, led by the Illuminati conspiracy theorist Do Giam. Do Giam reveals that it was Daejin's plan all along to lure Da Chang out so that the others could catch all of the Hate Wang members at once without them being protected by their leader. Meanwhile, Daejin also heads to the said location as he truly wishes to fight Do Chang in a one-versus-one fight, 
and before heading out, he gives Dog Yim the responsibility to take all the members in Gangbuk in the meantime. This time, Daejin is certain that he will be able to make a big hole inside Haeguan. Going back to the present, Daejin reveals himself to be right ahead of Don Cheng's car and almost crashes his bike into his running car, forcing the driver to skip to his right and crash against the railings of the bridge. Daejin then stops the bike, confirming that he has successfully taken out the driver, leaving only Do Chang for the fight. Do Chang gets out of the car unscathed and steps towards Daejin, telling him that he is nothing but big talk. He no longer waits for any chit chat and kicks towards Daejin with heavy power, and as Daejin barely dodges it, his kick hits the bike and puts a dent on it, making Daejin realize how monstrously strong his opponent is. Do Chang tells Daejin that he has been watching his moves with heavy interest, even though they are nothing but enemies, and admits that he is greatly disappointed by seeing how pathetic he is. He first became interested in Daejin when Daejin gave up his revenge at the ancient port and chose to flee with his subordinates back then. According to Da Ching's belief, a leader should know their place and back down when necessary, as that is one of the qualities of being a great leader. So now that Daejin is acting like he can take Do Chang alone, he clearly doesn't know his place, which has disappointed him so much that he punches Daejin's helmet to vent out his frustration. He throws around Daejin for a while, and although Daejin endures the pain, he, for some reason, doesn't try to attack Do Chang back. Daejin calls a timeout as he keeps getting cornered and takes off his helmet, revealing that he is not actually Daejin but Huizu, who was playing a joke on him, giving the reason that he doesn't know. Don Chang doesn't understand what this stupid prank is, but before he can do anything about it, Huizu swiftly leaps away from him and jumps off the bridge, knowing that he cannot outrun him, but probably can outswim him. And at the same time, Huizu also tells Don Chang that Daejin isn't actually going to be meeting him tonight, meaning that all of it was a trap all along. Soon after, Huizu goes back to the base and reports to Daejin that their operation was a complete success. Just as part of their initial plan, Huizu reveals that he successfully attached a GPS tracker to Da Cheng's car and can now easily catch him using the tracker whenever they want. So now that Daejin has his location, he is certain that he will be able to take all of Da Cheng's bases by the route by following his footsteps literally. The next morning at Haekwang's temporary residence, Do Jiem takes out one of the guards by surprise, and after taking all of them out, he calls his subordinates to enter the residence, revealing his intentions to infiltrate Haekwang's base. Do Chain arrives there shortly after but becomes too late, as he finds all of his henchmen to be beaten unconscious. He learns that more of his temporary bases were attacked by Daejin's team as well, meaning that the other temporary bases would soon be attacked as well. So the executives at those bases prepare for the enemy, but they too fail to stand up against the brute force of Daejin's frontline leaders, like Huizu, who single-handedly takes out all of the henchmen. While everything in Haegwang is faltering, Daejin explains that his plan is working because Da Cheng's organization is overly centered around him and that is why not having their leader has turned out to be a fatal weakness for them. And thanks to the tracker, Daejin knows exactly where Da Cheng is, and thanks to that, his team is attacking the other locations while avoiding him. Do Cheng soon figures out something is terribly wrong, as the ambushers are able to evade him every time he tries pursuing them. But he doesn't consider that a GPS tracker must be behind it and wonders if his personal driver is the one who has been leaking information to Daejin, but knowing that his driver is loyal to him, the chain goes to his car, finds the GPS tracker, and realizes that from the beginning. Weez's intention was to attach the GPS tracker to their car. He also realizes that Daejin isn't going to show his face to him until he brings down his organization, which angers him so much that he gets sick of playing this game and begins his hunt to find Daejin. But Daejin quite unexpectedly shows up in front of Da Cheng at that very moment, taking out his driver first, revealing that he not only wants to bring the organization down, but also wants to capture Da Chang. Da Chang doesn't think Daejin has what it takes and tells him that, just like Hangul Zhou, who dared to attack Haewang and got defeated, Daejin will also be met with the same defeat. A flashback shows Im Dong being considered over Daejin's safety as well because he too was aware of the fact that Da Chang could literally murder Daejin as he was completely on another level. But Do Hyun was certain that Daejin would be able to defeat him, as he had devoted his life to taking down Hei Wang and eliminating Yu Zhang Shin. He stops Da Cheng's punch, showing the innate strength in him, and slams him on the ground. Do Cheng gets surprised to see how agile Daejin has become since the last time he saw him at the ancient port. However, he still doesn't think Daejin has what it takes to fight Hei Wang, telling him that he is still a small fry in his eyes. 
Daejin shortly after realizes that Da Qing is on a different level, as he sees right through him and attacks at the weak spots as if he knew exactly where he would try to dodge and make an attack. After taking many heavy blows and failing to land a single hit on Duk Chang, Daejin tries out some petty tricks, like sneaking up behind Duk Chang, but that clearly doesn't work. So Duk Chang pushes him away and points out Daejin's fatal attribute that disqualifies him from being a proper leader. And that is that Daejin was a sore loser before he became a runaway kid and was bullied by his school classmates. Duk Chang thinks that Daejin just wants to play at being the boss to compensate for what he lacked in his past and even compares him to Hangul Jo, telling him that he too was the same kind of trash as him. Hearing this makes Daejin remember when he was returning with Hangul Jo's birthday cake when some bullies in the neighborhood were picking an unnecessary fight with him. Hangul Jo rescued Daejin, showing his extraordinary fighting talent, and this made Jun realize that he has been taking too much shelter from him, as Hangul always rescued him every time he got in trouble and always looked after him. Daejin wasn't skilled enough to fight for himself. He became completely depressed and thought that he was of no help to neither Hangul Jo nor the runaway family. So he said to Hangul that maybe he should leave, but Hangul thought otherwise and moved the conversation to the cake and started eating it even though it was already on the ground. Hangul taught him that they are a family not because they can provide for each other, but because they want to help each other. And that is why Daejin still considers Hangul to be his true family. And because Dok Chang dared to speak badly of him, he tells him that he knows about Hangul Jo. This time, Daejin purposefully changes the trajectory of his punch, knowing that Dok Chang will try to predict a straight punch and land the first blow successfully on him. Dok Chang doesn't understand what the move was, to which Daejin explains that Hangul used to use this move and reveals that he has been training for the past year to manifest all of Hangul Jo's skills into him so that Hangul can live on through him. Daejin gets ready to fight properly now as he no longer underestimates Dao Chang and swiftly dodges the attacks using Hangul's technique while simultaneously attacking him. A year ago, when Daejin lost Hangul to Hate Wang, he realized that he wouldn't be able to beat Hate Wang with his strength, so in order to seek revenge, he pushed himself to become a stunter and put all his blood, sweat, and tears into his training. Dokchain also realizes that Daejin has been hiding his true abilities all this time, so it becomes clear to him that maybe Hangul wasn't as pathetic as he thought he would be. Daejin keeps using Hangul's technique and starts pounding on Dokchain's face repeatedly, which momentarily makes him see a flashback to when he was still a little boy and saw his father as the leader who had always taken care of his friends. But his father never spent any time with his family and focused too much on his organization which made him wonder why his father was trying to make his organization into his family. He admired his father, though he was still a kid, and wanted to follow in his footsteps. However, his father's abilities proved insufficient as he was soon drowning in debt and losing not only his organization, but also the ability to provide for his starving family. This made Do Cheng realize that all his father was was an incompetent fool, so he made up his mind and got rid of his own father himself as he didn't want to follow in his footsteps. And so he compares his father with Hangul Jo, telling Daejin that because Hangul is dead and couldn't take care of his fallen organization, he is incompetent. He still shows his belief, saying that both Hangul and Dajuan are incompetent leaders and shouldn't be given the power to lead Gamebuck. However, Daejin believes otherwise as he still remembers how amazing Hangul was and knows that even if he tried his best, he could never become just like him. With Hangul's strength, he risked his life for his family and that makes him more competent than Dao Chang will ever be. As he starts pounding Dao Chang to make him understand that he isn't weak, Dao Chang realizes that if he doesn't end things here, Daejin will surely be able to bring down Hei Wang. Daejin's will to avenge his family keeps him standing, and as he overpowers Dao Chang completely, his goal to take down Hei Wang becomes closer. Will Daejin be able to carry the legacy and beat Dao Chang? Find out in the next video, Comment down below and like the video if you want the next part of this exciting series. See you next time.